everyone and welcome to Doodle Therapy, a interactive drawing show here on Adobe Live. Here at Doodle Therapy, this is all about taking the time to just draw, chill, share how life is going, and just relax with friends. So today we'll be drawing together and continuing what we started doodling yesterday. Um, I'm your host, Alice, and if you are joining us live, welcome to the stream. I hope that everyone is having a great day. Um, but yeah, if you're joining us, um, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat and um, share where you're from and maybe share one thing that's happened to you today. One could be a big thing or small thing, good or bad. Um, it's always fun to read everyone's updates. Um, hey to Keith, Felipe, to Sam, Celine. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned, Doodle Therapy is a show here where we're just all about getting into the flow of doodling and drawing together. So the way that it works is every week we have a different Doodle Therapy prompt um, and that corresponds with a uh, interactive activity that I'll lead everyone through um, and uh, we'll be all drawing together. If you also end up um, creating a doodle from this prompt, you can also send it to me. I'm at by Alice Lee everywhere. Um, and uh, you might be entered in a giveaway to win stickers or pins. Um, so yeah, hey to Marissa, hey to Jay. Um, sorry to Keith who says that he woke up early against his will. Um, that's unfortunate, always unfortunate. So to recap where we are in today's schedule, we are just, this is the last stream of the day. We just finished up the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge with Andrea, and tomorrow we'll kick off the day with getting started with Vector Illustrations with Paul at 7.30 a.m. So thanks for sticking around and closing out the afternoon um, with us here. It's always a nice uh, treat to just take a little break in the middle of the day and start to draw. Um, a little bit about me. So like I mentioned, I am a muralist and an illustrator based in SF. Um, here are some of my work. You may have seen some of my stuff around at places like the Asian Art Museum, um, Coach, Phil's, etc. And today we are um, continuing to work on our doodle prompt, which is to draw some summertime postcards. Um, since we're in the middle of the summer season, seems like 2020 is just flying by. Um, I thought it would be fun to just draw some relaxing landscapes. Um, and what I'm doing today is also taking input from you guys, the audience. So if you would like to share, you know, where you're based and um, an interesting sort of landscape that is near where you are, um, feel free to say it in the chat and I might just draw it. Um, so yeah, it's great to see everyone again. And if you are just joining the chat at any point in the stream, feel free to introduce yourself. Uh, we are a friendly bunch. Um, so yeah, to also, like I mentioned, um, we have a, a doodle challenge submissions component. So I wanted to share some really uh, lovely submissions. Thank you to Celine and um, who, uh, painted this really lovely painting of, um, I think the mountains near where they live. Um, yesterday, Celine mentioned that they were going skiing. So I think that uh, that is what inspired this. And also to um, ivave.draws for submitting this really fun um, limited palette drawing. Um, love to see all of the submissions that you guys end up drawing. Hey to Shauna, to Amy, and to Susan. Um, so yeah, if you end up drawing um, anything with this prompt as well, feel free to share it with me at by Alice Lee, like I mentioned. 
So we are going to jump straight back into the um, painting part of the session. Um, and just to recap some of my process for this, um, I first, you know, took some suggestions from the chat about different landscapes to draw and um, ended up just sketching out um, some pieces and then filling them in. So yesterday we had a lot of fun um, painting some happy little clouds. I feel like I'm getting um, into my like Bob Ross uh, vibe, but um, I was demoing how I like to do really simple clouds with just taking a brush, bringing the opacity down, um, and just kind of roughing out those shapes. Um, yeah. So yeah, would just love to hear, you know, if anyone is um, working on anything cool or wants to share anything related to their creative projects, feel free to say it in the chat. Um, yesterday we were talking about some of the projects that people were working on. Um, and we also had a really fun conversation about um, foods that people have been cooking. That's kind of like a theme I feel during this shelter in place quarantine time. Um, and so uh, after the stream yesterday, I actually, I was inspired by that conversation as well as by my friend Amy's Twitter post about ramen. And I ended up um, checking out different types of like instant noodles on Instagram from different cultures. And um, I thought that it would also be a fun conversation potentially in this stream if um, anyone has any favorite cultural foods that they want to share that um, other people can really easily buy in a um, uh, like instant format. So if anyone has, for example, any instant ramen recommendations that are beyond the really mainstream and obvious choices, like not um, not like the, uh, what's the couple noodle, you know, just like the basic kind, but something that's like really specific, um, would love to hear any suggestions in the chat. Um, and hey to Dean and to Jake for, uh, thanks for joining us again. Cool. So once I finish really just quickly blotting in these um, cl clouds with my opaque brush, I'll then take my eraser and then I will usually set that down opacity a little bit. And then I will start to add a little bit more of that fun cloud detail. And so yesterday I got this um, idea for this um, illustration because Amy suggested, Amy mentioned that she had recently had a picnic in their friend's backyard. So I thought it would be really fun to illustrate that um, as a relaxing summer landscape. And um, one thing that I like to do when I'm drawing Foliage is, if I don't want to get into all the little details, like I don't want to draw this like super rendered leaf or bush because I'm just trying to draw something, you know, really simple right now. Um, I just try to keep in mind like the rough, def rough um, direction of the bush. So this is like how the bush is probably growing in this direction. And then I'm just very, um, abstractly kind of adding in the shapes of um, some of the leaves and thinking about um, where some of the leaves would overlap. Um, and because I usually, when I draw bushes, I'll usually do multiple colors. Like, I think it's really helpful to think of this layer as a base layer, for example, and then I'm gonna add a highlight layer and a shadow layer and maybe like a second highlight layer. Um, oh, cool. Thanks uh, to Amy for sharing about Indomie. So yes, I actually ended up ordering um, Shin Ramen yesterday, Shin Ramen Black. Apparently that is uh, the way to go. 
I had previously ordered Shin Ramen Red on accident, and some friends were quite adamant about Shin Ramen Black being the number one choice. Um, and then I also ordered Indomie yesterday, which is, um, I believe, like a instant noodle that um, was originating from Indonesia. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I was inspired because my friend Amy had tweeted about it um, because the New York Times recently uh, published an article about the best, th their best ranked ramens, but a lot of them were kind of like very like East Asian focused or also like I think a little obvious TBH, like I think Shin Ramen was in it twice. Um, so um, I wanted to also expand my ramen uh, palette. And um, ooh, Seyoung says, try this Korean style spicy ramen, boldak bokiyum. Cool, I might try that. Um, I also recently tried this like really spicy Korean ramen. Um, so yesterday I ordered like 30 packs of ramen <laughs> to my house. Um, but I think that this is kind of a new um, personal like cooking thing that I'm interested in trying out is like different cultures ramen. So if anyone has suggestions, please feel free to let me know. Hey to Dema, welcome to the chat. So, you know, you can see here that I'm starting to outline some of these leaves. Um, sometimes they're overlapped because, you know, when you would normally look at a bush or a tree, you wouldn't really, you know, when you would look at a bush or a tree, it has lots and lots of leaves, obviously, and you wouldn't normally just look at one particular leaf. You kind of, your eyes kind of take it in as um, a whole tree with lots of leaves and some of them blend together. And so that's the um, effect that I want to have. There's definitely really amazing art and art styles where they'll draw all the details of the leaves like um, the Japanese director Makoto Shinkai. Um, he did Your Name, the movie, um, but he's like really known for drawing very, very detailed um, nature landscapes. Um, but I'm not really trying to do that here. I'm just trying to kind of work on like a quick doodle that is really fun. <clears throat> Ooh, Andrea says that they've been adding tiny cubed pancetta to their noodles. It's a great addition. And Keith has been going to the Asian market to get um, shrimp stock for their seafood and pork belly ramen. Yum, yeah, I've definitely been experimenting a lot with cooking, cooking ramen. Um, my friend actually told me that he adds cheese to his ramen, which I had literally never considered before. Um, but let me know if anyone does that and if it's like uh, delicious. Cool, so <clears throat> now that I've got this base layer of leaves down, I think I'm going to start to move in and fill it out a little bit. And if at any point you have any questions about my process or my setup or how I'm going about thinking about this illustration, feel free to always ask. Um, but as Bob Ross would say, you know, I'm just trying in some um, happy little trees. One thing I was thinking about <clears throat> yesterday when, because we were going over a little bit about people's projects, things they were excited about. 
and it got me thinking about um, what has been inspiring me recently <clears throat> in terms of um, artistically and personally. So I wanted to pose that question as well to the chat, which is um, what has been some of your creative inspirations lately? Um, for me, I think I've gotten a lot of inspirations from movies and TVs, TV shows. I actually haven't, I don't normally watch a lot of TV, but since, you know, Shelter in Place started, um, it's become more of a part of my routine. Um, and it's actually been really cool to get inspired by all that. And I never would have considered myself any kind of like video game gamer before, um, but since the uh, quarantine has started, I've actually played a couple of video games. So I got a Nintendo Switch and started playing Animal Crossing. Um, I've played Zelda now too, and um, started playing Pokemon and all of these video games, like I was never, I was never a gamer before, but all of these video games are so beautifully, um, beautifully created. And it's actually really inspiring to me. And I think that I've kind of incorporated a little bit of that like mystical um, vibe into some of my more recent artworks. So yeah, I'm so now what I'm doing is um, because I wanted to draw this like bush for the scene that um, Amy had suggested of a picnic in a friend's backyard, I'm now kind of just filling out the body of the bush. Um, and I'm gonna go in and change some of these colors later. Um, but I think just filling it in a little bit so it doesn't read as individual leaves and more as a mass will really help with this. Oh, cool. Mint says that they are building their first PC and someone built a PC in a mini co toaster. Cool. Um, what, I'm curious, what goes into building a PC? Um, that sounds pretty hard, um, but also possible because, uh, you know, obviously people are doing it. So how does that work? Ooh, um, Sayoung asks, do I have trouble picking the right color for my pieces? Yes. Um, so actually I'll show you a little bit of my process. So this is the color setup that I had at the end of yesterday's stream. I had just kind of gone ahead and, um, you know, roughed it in the shapes. And I, I wasn't really thinking too hard about the color, but I had gotten the approximate color down. For example, you know, we know that the sky is blue, clouds are, usually white-ish, um, et cetera. And, but the, the mood, I would, I would say, it doesn't really match what I'm trying to go for. Um, I wanted something that feels kind of, um, maybe even like nostalgic. And um, this seemed a little bit too warm and then the grass is like a little bit too cool. So what I ended up doing is, um, after I got the color, the shapes in, which you can see is also really simple. So like I have a base shape here and then the cloud shape, um, like some light accents um, and then another light um, highlight. So after I got those shapes in, um, I then threw on a hue saturation layer, which you can find down here. Um, you can adjust it in a lot of different ways like brightness, levels, etc. Um, you make that layer and then you clip it, make clipping mask, to this whole group. So then it applies only to that group. And then you can adjust the hue. So originally it's set to zero, um, but then I wanted it to be a little bit more cool to match 
um, the vibe that I want to go for. And then originally the saturation level was pretty unsaturated, I felt. So I wanted to just give it a little bit of like that like juice. So um, threw in a little bit of saturation and there we go. And then that's how I adjusted the colors. And the same thing went for this. Um, that's what it was originally, but I wanted it to feel a little bit more like almost like a beach fantasy. So the colors are punched up a little bit and, and um, I might even throw on a levels layer here, um, clip it to the group. And then with the levels, you can then adjust, oops, the levels, you can then adjust the bright side here and then the dark side and the midtone. So if I feel like I want the, the, the darks basically to get a little darker, then I can just drag this and adjust the whole thing that way. So I actually want it to be a bit more dreamy, so I'm gonna move it all to be a little bit brighter in the midtones. <clears throat> so I hope that was helpful um, to going over my, um, my process. And definitely let me know if you have any more questions or if I am going a little fast, um, or if you didn't tune in yesterday, but would like clarifications on how I um, got to a certain place. Um, Celine says they're playing Cuphead. Um, is that a video game? Not sure, uh, not familiar. Um, Raphael says that building PCs is fun. It's like Legos. Um, yeah, that does sound fun. It, um, it sounds kind of, it sounds pretty rewarding because at the end of it, then you have your computer and you know exactly how, you know, each piece works. That said though, it also seems kind of high stakes. Like I might be a, a little bit afraid to like install the, you know, discs or whatever. Um, just because I wouldn't want to like accidentally <laughs> mess up something in the computer. So props for tackling that. And um, yeah, thanks to Shauna for saying you like how I draw clouds. Um, I really like drawing clouds. I think they're really fun. Um, these are really simple versions. Um, you can see, well, actually you can't in the frame, but in some of the doodle therapy artwork that I've done for the show, um, I've just kind of gone crazy with them. It's just so fun to draw. And they're also very forgiving, I feel, um, because they're, they can be more abstract um, while also being very expressive. Cool, so I am going to just do a quick little trick, which is, I'm gonna bring that over here. So what I did is I duplicated this base layer and then um, I just uh, flipped it and then brought it over here and now I'm just going to adjust it. And so, you know, it's kind of like saving you a little bit of time. Um, I'm, a, I'm going to be um, adding onto this layer so it's not like I'm like straight up cheating, but um, if you ever have to do something that's like extremely tedious and has a lot of details, it can be a way to save time and be more efficient about it. Ooh, Keith says that at their local pho restaurant, the owners would give them um, some sauce to take home. That's really nice of them. Yeah, I might try this game Cuphead. Um, so I'm not sure if anyone here has played Zelda, um, but I recently started to play and um, we're playing on my boyfriend's account. So he actually had already made a lot of progress, but I feel like we are kind of reaching the end of the game of like, in terms of like, we've done a lot of the tasks and um, like sometimes we will like go to a place in the game and then find out that like we actually already completed that task. So 
I'm like slightly on the lookout for another uh, video game. And it's actually kind of interesting because I feel like um, video games have sort of replaced a lot of what social media used to be for me. Like, I feel like in the pre-quarantine life, um, I would be more active on social media. Um, maybe because I was just more like social overall. And then since, um, you know, we've all been distancing, um, I found myself getting more and more into like reading books and playing video games. So um, that's kind of been an interesting uh, change. And I wonder if anyone else has observed any similarities with their relationship with social media and like how that has changed during quarantine. Cause I think that um, it's actually like a mental health um, benefit as well in a lot of ways to change some of these habits and examine them. Um, I simply hadn't realized how much time I spent on social media until um, quarantine happened. And then, um, you know, all there was to do was to like sit around and then I would, I really realized, you know, how, how ingrained the habit was. So I'm just curious, like how, how, um, how people have been approaching social media during this time and like, um, be just generally being online. Um, hi to Shirley. Thanks for joining. It's great to see you again. Um, and ooh, Shauna has been playing Witcher 3 and Amy suggests another Zelda Switch game, Link's Awakening. Cool. Okay, I might try that too. I think I've actually seen some of the artwork for it on the internet when I've searched for Zelda. And Sam, I think we are going to try to get all of the shrines because there's like nothing left to do. Um, this also reminds me as we approach the middle of the stream. Um, so I have a very special announcement. We will be back next week um, here with Doodle Therapy at the same time, 2.30 Pacific on Monday and Tuesday. Um, except next week is a very special stream. We will have a surprise for everyone. Um, and I think I'll just announce it here. Um, yeah, we'll have a surprise for everyone. Um, we will be having our very first uh, guest artist um, who is in this chat right now. So next week we'll have Amy Weboil, AKA Sailor HG, um, uh, with us in the Doodle Therapy stream. We will be streaming side by side and doing a um, doodle activity prompt that we have come up together. So um, hope that hope to see you guys again next week because it's really gonna be special with um, Amy joining us. Ooh, Shirley says they've felt message exhaustion, so they try not to touch social media on the weekends. And there's been days where they've gone without. Yeah, I, so I realized that I hadn't actually like tweeted actively um, in like a month uh, the other day. I've uh, gone on Twitter to read articles and sometimes I'll like, like people's posts, but I hadn't actually really been on Twitter for a while. And um, that was really interesting because I feel like Twitter used to be one of my biggest um, social media addictions. So yeah, um, thanks to Shirley for saying you're excited. We are all very excited. Um, Amy is someone who's really inspired me as an artist. Um, and she's also a really amazing artist herself. So it'd be really cool to draw side by side. Oops. Cool, so I've kind of got this bush layout um, done. And so now I think I'm just going to rough, rough in the um, picnic blanket that Amy and her friends 
will be sitting at. Yeah, Sam has mentioned they're trying to get off of Twitter and Reddit. Yeah, I think it's almost like now that I feel like we almost have like infinite access to social media now, you know, because our days are um, inherently less rigid and structured as they were before, where, you know, normally you'd have like a routine, you go to work, have a meeting, person, blah, blah, blah. So you, you really can't be like checking social media during that stuff. But like now that every, everyone's working from home, like if you really, really wanted to check like Twitter or something, you might be able to. And so having that kind of like immediate access for me kind of like made it less interesting because it's like, okay, I could, I could just like get, get this anytime. Um, so I think that that like has partly contributed to my checking social media a lot less. Ooh, this is really interesting. So um, also to the earlier question from Seyun, um, also, please let me know if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. Um, but uh, so you can see here that this is the um, color that I had set for these leaves. And um, what I like to do is lock the transparency. And then um, sometimes I'll just like apply a quick gradient. So you can see that like, um, if you just look across these leaves, it's darker over here and lighter over here. And the gradient is applied across the entire shape. And then if you hit that um, hue saturation layer, you can actually pitch it upwards. Um, I'm gonna make it a little darker because I did like it when it was darker, but I can add a little bit of blue to it, which I think is actually really nice because um, the whole scene is a little bit on the cooler side. Um, and so that's, that's one way that you can um, adjust those colors. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing here, except you know, I'll use the eyedropper, grab this guy, maybe like bring the color up a little because that base color is supposed to be lighter than that shadow color. And so I've got, you know, the, um, I, then I throw a gradient onto that bottom layer, this one here. And then if I use hue saturation again, um, I can bring the lightness down so that it's properly uh, like lit against the other layer but then I can start to introduce a little bit more of that blue green in there as well. And um, yeah. And then finally I have to fix this top layer um, because it's standing out a little bit. So again, I will just go in here, grab that layer and um, bring it up a little, um, throw on that layer. Yeah, I like that green and then Um, and then I will pitch it down a little. So yeah, um, that's kind of how I like to really quickly adjust some of my colors. And obviously the more complicated your paintings and compositions are, um, the more granular you need to get with the color. But since this is more of a simple sort of piece, um, I think throwing like a general lighting source, like one lighting source on there is, is uh, fine. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this picnic blanket. So make it a little bit more pink, a little bit more cool. And there's like a, there's so many great resources about color theory out there on the internet. Um, and there's, it's kind of like a topic with like endless, with an endless amount of study that one can um, do for this. But um, one resource that I actually really enjoyed recently was I took Victor Nye's class on color theory in Skillshare. And I thought that it was actually really well taught. She covers, um, I think color theory can help really improve a piece it's kind of one of those um, factors where it's like when you look at something and it looks technically done, but then there's something kind of off about it. Um, and at the same time, it's helpful to learn these rules and to learn the rules of like how lighting and color actually appears out in the real world so that you can then break them or push them and make it like exaggerated. Um, so yeah, if that's something 
that anyone is interested in studying up on, um, really recommend that resource. Cool. And then I think I'm just going to draw like the silhouettes of the people eating together. Eating. I'm not sure if it was a socially distanced, I think. Um, or if everyone is in the same household. Or if everyone is in the same like quarantine bubble. to that. So yesterday, Celine also mentioned that they were going skiing. Um, so I wanted to work on another postcard. Um, oh, hey, Anna, thanks for joining in. Um, everyone should check out Anna's work. It is really lovely. And Anna also streams regularly on Behance as well. Um, but uh, um, I was uh, sketching um, a really rough thumbnail from Celine's um, suggestion of um, drawing a, you know, a skiing mountain. Um, I don't actually ski very much myself, so I am just going off of like what in my mind a snowy mountain looks like with skiers on it. I've seen like a skiing mountain from afar, like in Tahoe. So. What I like to do for this sort of simple thumbnailing is um, I'm first going to define the frame that the piece is going to sit in. So as you can see here, for example, um, I have every single element in this simple illustration clipped to this bottom frame. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm just defining that little bottom layer and I find that it's actually a really um, fun way to make the whole thing look hand-drawn and like painted in the analog sense um, rather than having hard edges. And so I'm, um, I'm select, so what I did is I outlined the bounds of this um, background. And then I'm gonna take the magic wand tool, which is W, um, select the inside, and then um, expand the selection. Um, all of these, if you don't know the shortcuts or where to find them, you can just, you know, type it into the search bar and help, which I use a lot. Expand, and then I'm going to expand it by like five pixels. So that actually expands your um, selection out because if you didn't do that and you just filled it in, you would actually get this, um, you know, like this little border um, of like artifact that it didn't actually pick up. But um, if you expand it, just a little bit beyond the selection, then um, you can fill the whole thing. That's actually a trick that I learned on Adobe Live um, from another artist. And uh, Dean asks if I name my layers. So that's a great question. I normally name them, um, I probably should. So uh, I use a lot of layers and I, I know some people, you know, a lot of people have different preferences. Some people paint exclusively on one layer or like two layers, or some people merge down layers a lot. Um, I'm, d I'm definitely on the like opposite end of that spectrum, which is like every element that I have that um, is its own color or is a color that I might want to adjust later independent of the others um, I have on a separate layer. So for example, if I had like merged this whole cloud down, then it would be really hard for me to just change just the accent color. Um, and I think that, you know, having that flexibility, if that's what you want, is kind of the point of um, working digitally versus, uh, you know, it, it, or it's like one of the benefits of working digitally versus painting um, analog. So um, I'll usually just group all of those layers together. So I got this little group and then name, I'll name it Picnic. Yeah, and you know, sometimes like like Anna said, layer 46, it just describes this piece. Like it's definitely intentional. Um, like obviously this is, when I look at the name layer 46, that's what I think of. Or 
Um, let's see, what is this? Group two is, you know, naturally <laughs> this one over here. So um, this one will call it each, and this one will call it, oops, hillside. Great suggestion, Anna. And actually in the beach one, um, I, so like one thing that I really love drawing um, is like stars and moons. And sometimes I just like to add a moon in, like even when it's like the middle of the day, because you know, you can actually see the moon sometimes in the sky and it kind of gives it that um, surreal, surreal vibe. Um, yeah. Um, one question, I'm actually really curious if, to anyone who's watching, I'm curious if um, a project that you saw um, being worked on on Adobe Live inspired you to um, do a project of your own in a similar vein. So for example, for me, um, I have been on Adobe Live in the past, um, mostly as a host, and so actually working side by side with artists and seeing their approach and then getting to like be the one to ask them all these questions of like, oh, so like I noticed that you um, switched this brush to this other brush or I noticed that you um, use this keyboard shortcut, like why did you do that? I think that um, it's actually, I actually ended up learning a lot and um, taking some of those practices in to my own practice. So just curious if uh, anyone has had any cool stories of inspiration like that from other Adobe live streams as well. And yes, Amy, chaotic good vibes for sure. Um, sometimes you just got to keep it a little chaotic, you know, unless someone is going to actually use that file in the future. And in, in which case, like if I'm ever handing off my files to a client, I, I do feel kind of bad and um, I try to like organize it as best as possible. Oh, cool. Um, Dama, are you watching the live stream that I did where uh, Voodoo Val was hosting? Oh, and thanks to Anna for saying that you, um, or sharing that, sharing your um, sculpting butterfly story. That's really cool. Um, how did you sculpt them? Were you using clay? I recently bought a whole packet of like air dry clay and I've started to make earrings for myself. Dama says that Animal Crossing is their theme at the moment. Yes, and I'm not sure if you saw this morning, they um, recently announced the latest updates for Animal Crossing, but um, there's going to be like fireworks and then you can dream and then visit people in their islands, which is really cool in your dream. Cool. So, um, I, since, you know, I want to keep this as a set of four and I think it'd be really fun to represent a different color of blue or maybe not even blue at all for, um, this set. Or you know what, maybe I can change this blue to something that's a little bit more futuristic. Ooh, that's really cool. So what I'm doing here is really simple. I'm just um, pulling up the hue saturation um, tab and then adjusting the hue. And so that's how you can really quickly get a new color and then you can adjust it on your own later. Mountain is far in the distance, so it is lighter. There's definitely a, a word to describe this kind of like pastel, dreamy aesthetic. And if anyone knows what that is, definitely let me know. It's kind of like 90s throwback, internet girl vibe.
Um, ooh, Dean says that they saw a YouTube series about making custom Photoshop brushes. So they made their own set of grime brushes. That's really cool. I really want to um, learn how to make my own brushes at some point in, in my life. <laughs> Um, because it seems actually like a very powerful skill. Um, and Anna says that she uses Sculpey, which is a baked polymer clay. Ooh, yeah, I kind of wish that I had gone with the polymer clay TBH instead of the air dry. Um, but alas. Ooh, Dama recently applied to uh, create a mural around their community. And so they sent different drawings and I hope that you get it. Um, painting murals is so fun. I am so excited, you guys. I So I'm a muralist as well and I haven't painted a mural since, uh, I haven't touched a wall as a muralist since January. And um, I've had mural projects be canceled and delayed because of the pandemic, which I understand. Um, it's like really hard to paint murals right now, I think, if, you, if it's like in an office building. Um, but I recently figured out how to um, get a mural set up in my garage. And I'm going to be painting that mural at home and then transporting it over to the office where it's going to live in. And that's going to happen in um, two weeks. So I'm really, really excited to um, get to paint it. Oh, cool. And Dama says that in the snack stream, someone asked about murals and they um, were able to have the courage to apply. That's amazing. Dama, I'm so happy for you. Um, I think that murals can seem like very intimidating, um, you know, because there's a lot of steps and it's not like, I think coming from like a, just like a normal art background, like it's, it's a lot more physical, for example, than like painting at your computer, but like, it's not that bad. It's, it's very doable. Um, there's, it, I feel like when, since I've produced my own murals as well um, and handle all the logistics for like painting it, um, I've actually grown a lot as a project manager and um, it's kind of like a superpower because after you paint your first mural, then you, um, it just feels like anything's possible, you know? You, you'll look at it and you'll think to yourself, like, wow, that lived on my computer the other day and now it's on this wall and everyone will, will be able to see it. So props to you and I hope you get it and I hope you continue to um, put yourself out there with, with uh, muraling or any other type of creative endeavor. But I think muraling is like a very, uh, very fulfilling uh, activity. It's also, you know, muraling, what I love about it is it sounds like you're doing a public art piece, Dema, and something for a community center. And I think that um, there's something really beautiful about creating art that is accessible to everyone because, um, I, you know, if I were to look back on my first, like, six, seven years of my career, I would say that a lot of the art that I made um, I'm proud of, but like it wasn't extremely accessible to a lot of people. Like I did a lot of stuff for tech apps um, and a lot of stuff for tech companies, but um, there's a lot of people in the community that maybe don't use those apps or don't have a phone or don't live in that specific area that my illustrations were shown. And so being able to create art that is public and street art, for example, that means that like anyone in the community can enjoy it. and um, I actually think that like uh, thoughtful public art can transform communities. So um, yeah, I'm a bit I'm on a bit of a rant here, but yeah, there's like so much to love about um, painting murals in communities. Oh, Chandan says doodling is a therapy. Yes, it is a very relaxing therapy. Hi to Lady Boss, and um, thanks to Amy for the soft dreamy colors. Yeah, uh, related to the like public art accessibility thing, um, I actually, one of my murals that I painted last year was at a senior center, like a community center, but 
they had like a lot of programs for seniors. So most of the people who would stop by and be like, oh, what you doing over here? Like, what are you working on? Were seniors in the community. And I would have never ever met like most of those um, seniors if I hadn't painted that mural. And they probably would have like never seen my artwork because a lot of my stuff is for advertising, um, mostly for, I think would be targeted towards like young to like mid-aged adults. And um, painting a mural in a public space like a community center means that so many people like kids, um, elderly folks, people from lower income households can experience your art, which I think is really cool. And Shirley also says she's thought a lot about transformative art in public. Yeah. Um, with respect to museums versus public spaces. Yeah. So like last year, I also painted a mural for the Asian Art Museum, which is in San Francisco. And um, the Asian Art Museum, um, it's actually really beautiful if you've ever visited inside. Um, however, this mural was located outside of the museum. And if you are familiar with SF, the, the museum is located in the Tenderloin, which is not, um, it's, it's a area that um, has a lot of violence and homelessness and social issues. Um, and I think that a lot of the wealth inequality in San Francisco can be really felt when you walk through the Tenderloin and see the tech offices in the distance and then a lot of suffering um, in front of you. And um, I won't get into like the history of SF gentrification and stuff, but one thing that was really important to that project was creating public art that anyone could access and participate in because uh, we had like an interactive component to our mural, um, regardless of if you like were a young adult techie or um, someone who had lived in SF for like six generations. Um, and I think that that was really powerful for that area. Um, and I heard a lot from um, people, uh, like I would visit the mural all the time uh, and then I would hear a lot about how they felt that the mural um, was a transformative, uh, helpful thing for the community. So all that to say, public art is awesome. Um, Dean asks if I know about the Black Lives Matter mural in the Seattle area. Um, yeah, I'm not really familiar with that specific mural, but I've definitely seen um, pictures of a lot of the public Black Lives Matters, Black Lives Matter murals in a lot of the major cities. Oh, hi, Ricardo. Thanks for joining our conversation. I, I'm glad that you found it relaxing. Oh, Chris asked a great question. Oh man, I wish I had prepared this um, for this stream. I can share it next week if you're interested, but um, to answer your question, Chris, I don't grid out my murals. Um, I actually, what I'll do is I will create a piece like this and then I will create an outline version where I'm just drawing the edges. So it's almost like I make a coloring book. Um, and then um, I will take my projector and I'll project it on the wall. Um, and so you have to do that at night. Um, and sometimes, you know, you're like on a ladder and it's like pitch black and it's kind of scary. And then um, I'll just literally trace it onto the wall. Sometimes I'll use chalk, sometimes I'll use pencil, depending on the surface of the wall. And then I can use that as a reference to then start painting. There's a lot of different ways that you can um, transfer murals though onto walls. Um, you know, I would say like the old school muralists just freehand. Um, I, a lot of muralists I know create the artwork beforehand and some use grids, some project, um, some just use the reference. So yeah, I think it depends on just your preferences. And um, thanks to Celine and uh, Chandan for um, for your kind words.
So this is um, inspired by Celine's skiing adventure. I'm not sure what kind of trees are native to your area. So I'm kind of just drawing some like birches. Um, yeah, they could be like pines maybe if you, if that's what's in your area. Um, and for those who are curious about the background music, um, this is a band named Lullatone. They are one of my favorite bands to paint to. They're a husband and wife duo in Japan. Um, you should definitely check them out. They just came out with a new album um, based on sounds of quarantine. And yeah, I've actually am using them, their work in two projects now. Um, well, cool. We are just about wrapping up for the day. Just wanted to say thanks to everyone um, for uh, tuning in. Um, I hope that everyone has a great day. Um, oops, the rainbow effect didn't happen. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks, thanks to everyone for um, tuning in. And next week we have a really exciting special guest. Let's try the rainbow effect again. Special guest with um, Amy Weebowo. And so um, if you'll tune in then, um, you'll see our first ever guest artist here. Thanks everyone and have a great rest of your day.